हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू ऑन बायूज एग्जाम प्रेप इंडिया मोस्ट कॉम्प्रीहेंसिव प्रिपरेशन प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर ऑल द इंजीनियर्स फ्रेंड्स इन टूडे सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द आर्मेचर रिएक्शन फिनोमिना इन सिंक्रोनस मशीन्स इन टूडेज कॉन्सेप्ट कैप्सूल विद इन जस्ट अप्रॉक्सीमेटली फिफ्टीन मिनट्स विल ट्राई टू डिस्कस एंड अंडरस्टैंड वट इज आर्मेचर रिएक्शन इन सिंक्रोनस मशीन्स दिस video is going to be very important for all those candidates who are preparing for gate and engineering services and various other psu examinations because you see that most of the time you are getting one or two questions directly from the phenomena of armature reaction in case of synchronous machine it may be theoretical it may be numerical so let us start our discussion but before we start all the candidates just quickly hit the like button like share and subscribe like the session if you find the content useful to you share it with your friends and colleagues so that maximum people can be benefited and subscribe to byju's exam prep english youtube channel some of you may be joining me for the first time so there is a brief introduction about myself my name is ashutosh as you can see on the screen i have 11 plus years of teaching experience completed mtech from it bh in 2010 written couple of books on engineering ethics and power system and my areas of expertise are power system electrical machines electromagnetic field theory material science engineering ethics and current affairs if we talk about the synchronous machine in general we can say like any other machine synchronous machine is also going to have two important parts as per the constructional details the first one is the stator stator is the stationary part and the stator of your synchronous machine is very much similar to the stator of a three phase induction motor the stator is going to have three phase distributed windings now let us talk about the rotor the rotor basically we are providing the dc excitation we'll discuss why but the rotor can have basically two types of construction constructions first one is cylindrical rotor and the second one is salient pole rotor cylindrical rotor you can understand is the rotor where the air gap between the stator and rotor periphery is constant so in short you can say the air gap reluctance is going to be constant for the cylindrical rotor machine whereas if you talk about the salient rotor the rotor is going to have different air gap in the most simple case you can understand that your round rotor or cylindrical rotor is going to be something like this this is your stator part and this is your stator for the salient pole the rotor is going to be cylindrical as the name indicates and you can see the air gap at all the points is going to be constant so that the air gap reluctance is going to be same at all the points whereas if you talk about the salient pole machine for the salient pole machine these are our poles and these poles are called as salient poles because they have projected or protruded pole this is the maximum air gap this is the maximum air gap whereas in case of poles or the pole faces you have the minimum air gap and because of this reason when we model our machine for cylindrical rotor synchronous machines we generally use only one type of reactance to represent the reactance phenomena whereas when we talk about the salient pole rotor because of the two different reactance uh, leakage flux you can say involved in case of salient pole rotor that is along the direct axis and the 
quadrature axis. This is going to be the direct axis, whereas this is going to be the quadrature axis. But we are not going into the details of it because we are going to discuss the armature reaction. Let us first talk about what is armature reaction. Armature reaction can be defined in the most simple terms as the effect of armature flux on the main field flux, main field flux is called as armature reaction. We have already studied this phenomenon of armature reaction in case of DC machines. But there is a big difference between the phenomena of armature reaction in case of DC machines and synchronous machine. When we talk about the armature reaction in case of DC machines, we are only concerned with the magnitude of the load. But when we talk about synchronous machine, because it is AC machine, we are also concerned about the quality or the power factor of the load. So this armature reaction is going to be depending upon the magnitude and power factor of the load. Now because of the dependence of armature reaction on the quality of the load, that is the power factor of the load, the armature reaction becomes a really complex phenomena in case of synchronous machine. So when we have such complexity, generally we go for extreme cases. So what can be the extreme cases when we are dealing with the quality that is the power factor of the load? The first extreme case is going to be a purely resistive load. Purely resistive load you can also write as or unity power factor load. How we are going to understand it? For the resistive load you know, the phase difference, I am just writing it as phi, do not confuse it with the flux. I am assuming the power factor angle is going to be zero for the resistive load because the voltage and current are going to be in the same phase. So what is going to be the power factor in this case? The power factor is going to be unity and that is why we are saying a purely resistive load is nothing but a unity power factor load. Now let us try to understand what is the armature reaction phenomena here. Suppose you have two armature conductors. Suppose this is the north pole and this is the south pole. And suppose this is a generator, we are talking about the generator. And suppose this rotor is rotating in this direction, that is the clockwise direction. So we are interested to know what is the direction of induced EMF or current in the armature conductors? You must be knowing for the generator action, we use the Fleming's right hand rule to find the direction of induced EMF or the current. What is Fleming's right hand rule? Let us understand. Your index finger is going to be in the direction of magnetic flux. Thumb is going to be in the direction of force, torque or the movement. And your central finger is going to be in the direction of induced EMF or the current. But please wait. You cannot directly apply the Fleming's right hand rule here. Because when we define the Fleming's right hand rule, we defined it for the DC machine. For the DC machine, the field poles were stationary, whereas the armature was rotating. But in this case, the field itself is rotating. It means the first thing we have to do is, we have to apply the concept of relative motion and we have to understand that if we stop the rotor, we are assuming that the rotor is not rotating, rotor is stopped and this stator is rotating. This is just our assumption. So if the field is fixed, 
and the ro stator is allowed to rotate, what is going to be the direction of rotation? Opposite. If the rotor is rotating in the clockwise direction and if we fix the uh, rotor, then the stator is going to rotate in the anti-clockwise direction. So let me apply the Fleming's right hand rule. What is the direction of main field flux? The direction of main field flux is going to be north to south. So my index finger is north to south. What is the direction of thumb? The direction of thumb, uh, let me just change the, let me just change the direction. Suppose it is clockwise. Because I have made the phasor diagram in the next pages, so I have to oblige with that diagram. That is why I am changing the direction. Whatever direction you want, you can choose. Suppose it is going to be anti-clockwise. So if we apply the concept of relative motion, assume that the rotor is fixed and the stator is rotating in the clockwise direction. Just apply the Fleming's right hand rule. For this armature conductor, the field is index finger in this direction, thumb in the upside direction because this is going to be the clockwise direction and the central finger is going to give you the direction out of the plane of the screen. It means here it is going to be a dot, here it is going to be a dot and if you apply the similar Fleming's right hand rule, you will find that here it is going to be a cross. Is it clear for everyone? Now let us try to understand the direction of main flux and the armature flux so that I, we can understand the nature of armature reaction. Let me first show you the direction of main field flux. The direction of main field flux is going to be north to south, something like this. This is going to be the direction of main field flux and obviously it is going to be north to south. So the flux can only be present in the core, not in the air. So this is going to be the direction. I hope you are able to follow this. Now let us try to find what is the direction of armature flux. This is going to be your main field flux. The armature flux you can directly find if this is a dot and this is a cross, you can apply the right hand thumb rule. So it is going to be upside. So it is going to be something like this. So if you see, in general you can say that if this is your main field flux, I am just randomly showing you, then at all the time your armature flux is going to be at 90 degree to the main field flux. It means we can say for a purely resistive load, the armature reaction is going to be what? Cross magnetizing. When the armature flux is perpendicular all the time to the main field flux, we are saying that the armature reaction is purely, purely, purely cross magnetizing. Let us understand this phenomena with the help of the phasor diagram. Suppose this is going to be your main field flux. By the Faraday's law, you know that E is equal to minus d phi by dt. So the EMF induced because of this flux is going to be lagging this flux by 90 degree because there is a minus sign and because of the differentiation, there will be a 90 degree phase difference. So I can say that the EMF induced is going to be 
something like this. Now, because it is a purely resistive load, so there will be no phase difference between the EMF and the armature current. So, I am assuming that the armature current is going to be like this. And the armature flux is going to be in the same direction as that of the armature current. So, I am assuming that this is going to be the armature flux. So, from the phasor diagram also you can understand that the phase difference between the armature flux and the main field flux is going to be 90 degree and the armature reaction is going to be purely cross magnetizing. Let us understand the other extreme condition for the power factor of the load. But before that let me just give you some understanding about the waveform also. Suppose this is your main field flux. Now you are saying that the EMF induced out of this flux is going to be 90 degree lagging. 90 degree lagging means if the flux is starting from here and if the EMF is lagging, it means EMF will be starting after 90 degree. So I am assuming this yellow one, this yellow one is going to be the EMF. Now because it is a purely resistive load, there will be no phase difference or lead or lag between the EMF and the current. So, if the yellow one is going to be your EMF, if the yellow one is going to be your EMF, this green one is going to be having the same phase as that of the EMF and the armature flux is going to follow the same phase because it is following the armature current. Now, if you see the nature, the nature is that armature flux and the main field flux they are always 90 degree to each other. That is why we are saying that the armature flux effect on the main field flux is cross magnetizing, actually purely cross magnetizing. Now let us talk about the armature reaction for the inductive load. Now when it is inductive load, please try to understand for the purely inductive load, the power factor angle is going to be 90 degree lagging. So, if phi is 90 degree and this is lagging, if you take the power factor, cos phi is going to be 0 and lagging. That is why we called, is, called it as 0 power factor lagging, 0 power factor lagging. Now, I have shown you that along the direct axis, you will be getting the position of maximum EMF along the direct axis. You must be knowing this. Because it is a purely resistive load in the previous case, so I max will also be at the same armature conductor. It is also going to be present at the same location where you are getting E max. So E max and I max locations are going to be same. Now, when we are talking about the purely inductive load, what is going to happen? If this is going to be a dot, this is going to be a cross, this is north pole, this is south pole and the rotor is rotating in this direction. Obviously, this is the case of a generator. If you are getting E max here along the direct axis, because it is a purely inductive load, the current is going to lag the EMF by 90 degree. It means you will be getting I max dot here and cross here. I hope you are getting this point. If you are comfortable in this, let me show you what is the direction of main field flux and armature flux. The main field flux is going to be north to south. It is going to be north to south as we have shown earlier. This yellow one is going to be the main field flux. North to south. Now, if this is going to be a dot for the current and this is going to be a cross, what is going to be the direction of armature flux? Apply the right hand thumb rule. Dot to cross finger movement and thumb is going to give you the direction of 
armature flux. So you can say I am using another color. So it is going to be see here. like this and you can say that at all the places the armature flux is going to be in direct opposition to the main field flux in direct opposition to the main field flux i hope you are getting my point we'll understand it with the help of phasor diagram and waveforms also so basically what we are trying to state here is that if this is your main field flux, the armature flux is at 180 degree or you can say complete opposition. Complete opposition means if the armature flux is in complete opposition with the main field flux, we say that it is the, it is the purely demagnetizing effect. It is the purely demagnetizing effect. Purely demagnetizing effect. The armature reaction is going to be purely demagnetizing because the armature flux is in complete opposition to the main field flux at all the places. Let us understand it with the help of the phasor diagram. Suppose this is your main field flux. EMF is going to be 90 degree lagging. Now the armature current is going to be 90 degree lagging with this EMF because it is purely inductive load. So armature current is going to be like this and armature flux will be in the same direction as that of the armature current. So you can say the phase difference between the armature flux and the main field flux is going to be 180 degree. So armature flux is in complete opposition of the main field flux and that is why the armature reaction is purely demagnetizing. Let us understand with the help of the waveform also. Again, this is going to be your main field flux, the red dotted one. The EMF induced is going to be 90 degree lagging, E is equal to minus d phi by dt, d by dt, 90 degree, minus means, minus 90 degree means 90 degree lagging. So if main flux is starting from here and EMF is 90 degree lagging, it means after 90 degree it will be starting. So EMF is starting from here. Now the armature current is going to be 90 degree lagging with the EMF. So if the EMF is starting from here, the current is going to start from here. So this green one is going to be your armature current and this white one refers the armature flux and armature flux will be in the same phase as that of the armature current. Now if you observe the main field flux and the armature flux you will find this is the dotted one red dotted one is the main field flux and this white one is the armature flux. At all the points you will see the main field flux and the armature flux they are in complete opposition. Complete opposition. Is it clear? Are you able to follow this? Next one is armature reaction at purely capacitive load. What is the meaning of purely capacitive load? Purely capacitive load means phi is going to be 90 degree but now it is leading. If you take cos phi it becomes 0 lag and it is leading and that is why for the purely capacitive load we are also using the term zero power factor leading load. Now this discussion is going to be quite easy for you because you know how we are going to proceed. E max condition you will be getting here. If this is north pole, this is south pole, this is the rotating direction and this is a generator, case of a generator. The case of the motor we can easily correlate if we know the armature reaction in case of synchronous generator or alternator. Here you will be getting a dot, here you will be getting, getting a cross, but because the current is leading the voltage by 90 degree, because it is purely capacitive load, now you will be getting a dot here. So I max condition you will be getting here and here it is going to be a cross and this is the, again the I max location. 
Let me just show you what is the direction of mean field flux. The direction of mean field flux is going to be north to south. Direction of mean field flux is going to be north to south like this. What is the direction of armature flux? This is your main field flux. What is the direction of armature flux? The direction of armature flux very easily you can find again from the right hand thumb rule. Fingers moving from dot to cross and thumb is going to give you the direction of armature flux. And if you see properly you will understand that all the points, all the points, the armature flux is going to be in the same direction as that of the mean field flux. It is going to be in the same direction as that of the mean field flux. So in simple terms, you can say, if this is your main field flux, your armature flux is going to be in the same direction. So you can say that the armature reaction is going to be purely magnetizing, purely magnetizing. Is it clear for everyone? Now let us understand the same phenomena with the help of phasor diagram. Suppose this is going to be your main field flux. This is going to be your EMF lagging the flux by 90 degree. Now the current is leading this voltage by 90 degrees. So armature current will be in this direction and the armature flux will be in the same direction. So you can see that the main field flux and the armature flux, they are in the same direction. It means they are going to support each other. So we are saying it is the magnetizing effect. From this waveform also you can understand main flux again red dotted one. EMF induced is going to be 90 degree lagging means if the flux is starting from here, the EMF should be starting after 90 degree. Now the current is leading the EMF, current is leading the EMF means before the EMF starts, 90 degree before that the current should start. So this green one is starting 90 degree ahead. And this white one is the armature flux which is going to follow the armature current in the same phase. Now if you focus, if you focus on main field flux and the armature flux, you will see at all the point, the armature flux and the main field flux, they are in the same direction. It means it is going to be purely magnetizing. Now we have discussed the extreme cases for the power factor condition of the load so that we can understand the nature of armature reaction in case of synchronous machines. But we have discussed it for the extreme conditions. Now let us discuss two practical cases so that you can have a generalized understanding of the armature reaction in synchronous machines. Suppose we are talking about the armature reaction in case of a 0 0.8 power factor lagging load. Just see the diagram. Suppose this is going to be your main field flux. Now, EMF is going to be 90 degree lagging. Now the current is going to be lagging. How much? 0 0.8 is the power factor. If 0 0.8 is the power factor, then what is going to be power factor angle? It is going to be approximately 36.86 degrees and it is going to be lagging with the EMF. So the armature current is going to be somewhere here. This is going to be your armature current. If armature current is here, then the armature flux is also going to be in the same direction. Now this armature flux, we can divide into two components. One is going to be horizontal component and one is going to be vertical component. If you see the horizontal component, this horizontal component is going to be completely opposite to the main field flux. So this horizontal component is responsible for the demagnetizing effect. 
yes or no and this vertical component is at 90 degree to the main field flux so this vertical component will contribute the cross magnetizing effect in short we can say the armature reaction in case of a practical load of 0 0.8 power factor lagging is going to be partly cross magnetizing and partly demagnetizing. I hope it is clear. But, uh, but please ensure we are discussing it for the case of generator. For the case of motor, we can easily correlate. I will show you the complete understanding for the generator and motor for armature reaction in a tabular form. Now, suppose we have a practical load which is 0 0.8 leading. It means if this is your main field flux, EMF is going to be lagging this flux by 90 degree. Now, the current is leading in nature. How much leading? 36.86. So, now your armature current is going to be somewhere here. If armature current is here, then armature flux is going to be in the same direction. Again, we can divide this armature flux into two components, the horizontal component and the vertical component. Now, you can see the horizontal component is in the same direction as that of the main field flux. So, this is going to contribute the magnetizing effect. And this vertical component is at 90 degrees, so it is going to contribute the cross magnetizing effect cross magnetizing effect so in short we can say that the armature reaction is going to be partly cross magnetizing and partly magnetizing in nature. I hope it is clear for everyone. Now let me just sum up all the points in the form of a table. So you can see here, I have shown you various power factor conditions, unity power factor, zero power factor lag, lead, 0 0.8 power factor lag and lead and the case for alternator and motor I have discussed. For the unity power factor, because it is purely resistive, so whether it is an alternator or motor, it is going to be purely cross magnetizing. For zero power factor lag, that means the purely inductive load. It is the purely inductive load. Purely inductive load. The armature reaction is going to be purely demagnetizing for the alternator. And the worst case is, it is purely magnetizing for the motor. Zero power factor lead means purely capacitive load. For this, the armature reaction for the alternator is going to be purely magnetizing. For motor, it is purely demagnetizing. For the case of practical loads of 0 0.8 power factor lag and lead, it is going to be partly cross magnetizing, partly demagnetizing or partly cross magnetizing and partly magnetizing. Reverse is the case for the leading condition. So this is all from my side friends. Thank you so much for joining me live in the discussion. I hope you enjoyed the session. So subscribe to Baiju's exam prep for all such more interesting videos. Just take the snapshot if you want. So thank you so much. All the very best. Stay connected. Thank you so much.